time is an artifact and therefore all of evolutionary theory itself is ultimately not deeply true and so haven't i shot myself on the foot logically because i'm using the theory of evolution with natural selection in, in several papers to to show that that theory entails that space-time is just a headset it's not the truth but, but evolution itself is not the truth and so i've shot myself in the foot i've used something that i know isn't the truth to prove that so you can see that the the problem that people have so what 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 gives here and you know am i just talking in, in stupid circles here and the answer is that this is how science pulls itself up by the bootstraps you you know right up front that no theory is the final theory which you put a theory down you write down your theory you put your assumptions and you make it mathematical and then you look at the scope of those assumptions, the scope of your theory, and then you prove the limits of your theory. That's what I did with evolution by natural selection. I used the mathematics of evolution to enjoy the scope, but then to show the limits of the, what are the limits? The very concept of objects in space-time can't be fundamental. That's the, the theory of evolution by, by natural selection itself says that. It says the probability that these, that objects in space-time are the truth is zero, because the probability that evolution would shape sensory systems to see the truth is zero. So that's now given that I can then say, okay, thank you, evolution. You're a wonderful theory inside space time. And you told me that I need to look for, for new things beyond space and time, objects in space and time. So I need to find a new deeper theory. I need to project it back into space time. And then I better be able to show how evolution by natural selection arises as a projection of this deeper theory. And I better get the right predictions inside space time. Otherwise I'm wrong. So this is how I've gotten, by the way, th this is not just like average people who, who haven't thought very much about this, who say this has actually been this kind of objection has been published in philosophy papers in mm. Synthase, a, a, a premier philosophy journal. So people have made this argument and, and it's against the, the saying that I've, I've shot myself in the foot logically. I, I mean, the way it was put is, you know, Hoffman's in an unfortunate dialectical situation. So, you know, in the arguments that I'm giving, and what, what I'm saying is this is the dialectical situation that science necessarily is in. We have to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps, one theory at a time, write down the assumptions, look at their limits, and the theory itself tells you that it's wrong at a certain point and that you have to transcend. And you, it doesn't tell you where, how to transcend. It just says you better transcend if you want to, you know. Anyway, this isn't it. If you want more, you better, you have to transcend. And But when you transcend, I'll be here to tell you whether you transcended in a way that's compatible with what, if I project my theory into space-time and I violate Einstein's theory or quantum theory or evolution by natural selection, I'm almost surely wrong. If I think I'm not wrong, I have some explaining to do. I, I have to explain why perhaps my projection into space-time is a generalization of Einstein's theory or this twist on evolution by natural selection, why the data, if you looked inside space-time, a closer look at the data would show show that my twist is the deeper and more correct twist.